soldier. My prepared text today was to have been, Make thy name be remembered in all generations. But I think I'm going to depart from my prepared sermon. While I was listening to the sergeant solo, I kept looking up at our service flag. I was thinking of the men in service. I see some of them here this morning. Private Roberts, Sergeant Jackson, Lieutenant Carter, and, uh, um... Private Park, first class. First class is right. I was over at the USO the other night, and I met somebody I hadn't seen in quite a long time. The last time I saw this man, well, one of my members treated me to a ticket to Yankee Stadium to see Joe Lewis versus Max Malin. In one minute and 49 seconds, an American fist won a victory. But it wasn't the final victory. No, that victory is going to take a little longer and a whole lot more American fit. Now those two men that were matched in the ring that night are matched again. This time in a far greater arena and for much greater stakes. Max Smaley, a paratrooper in the Nazi army. Men turned into machines challenging the world. Joe Lewis training for the fight of his up, life. This time it's a fight not between man and man, but between nation and nation. It's a fight for the real championship of the world, to determine which way of life shall survive, their way or our way. And this time, we must see to it that there is no return engagement. For the stakes this time are the greatest men have ever fought for. And what are the stakes? the American state. The German state, the Bible of the Nazis, the gospel according to Hitler. I'm not going to read all of this, but there are one or two things in this book that will interest you. I quote, what is denied to us, the German fist must take. If our forefathers had made their decisions by the same pacifist nonsense as the present day does, we would possess but a third of our existing territory. Further, he says, from time to time, the illustrated papers show how a Negro has become a lawyer, a teacher, perhaps even a minister. It never dawns on the degenerate middle-class America that this is truly a sin against all reason, that it is criminal madness to train a born half ape until one believes one has made a lawyer of him. This book was written 20 years ago. The plan which it foreshadowed has become a reality. And the Nazis now instruct their disciples in terms such as these. We must strive by any means to conquer the world. Any methods are permissible. Lie, betray, kill. Kill and kill again. Kill the Slavs, the Russians, the Poles, the Czechs. Don't stop whether you have an old man, a woman, a girl or boy. Kill. If we want to create our great German empire, we must exterminate everybody who stands against us. The liberty of the whole earth depends on the outcome of this contest. Americans have always guarded liberty. The sea took root in Boston. In that city is the Granary Burial Ground, 1660. Within this ground are buried the victims of the Boston Massacre, March 5th, 1770. The first to die in the Boston Massacre was Crispus Adams. 
long as freedom's cause the wise contend, dear to our country shall your fame extend. While to the world the lettered stone shall tell where Caldwell, Adams, Gray, and Maverick fell. At Concord Bridge, Sam Pratt and John Ferris helped to fire the shot heard round the world. At Bunker Hill, on June 17, 1775, gun belonged to Peter Salem, a colored man who carried it at Lexington, Concord, and Bunker Hill, and with it shot Major Pitcairn. And on Christmas Day, 1776, when all but the bravest hearts had lost hope, Prince Whipple took his place alongside those who pushed on. In the winter of 78 at Valley Forge, George Washington wrote, our soldiers have been a week without food. They are naked and starving. We cannot enough admire their unshakable patience and loyalty. Here Samuel Haynes, Salem Poor, and thousands of others left their bleeding footprints in the snow. In this war, the people of the New World won their independence. They joined hands and 13 colonies became the United States. Then the people of the New Republic began to build. Together, they pioneered, and together, they made territories into states. By 1812, a wilderness was becoming a great nation. Then came war. At Lake Erie, Tyler Thompson heard Admiral Perry's immortal words. We have met the enemy, and they are ours. And in New Orleans, when General Jackson said, by the eternal they shall not sleep on our soil, Thomas Wilson was there. America began to build ships. Then came 1861. That government of the people by the people, for the people, shall not perish from this earth. With malice toward none, with charity for all. Then America began to rebuild. What's the matter, Jim? You quitting? Man, I'm going to Cuba. Cuba? Yeah, with the 9th Regiment, United States Cavalry, horses. Jim fought in the Spanish-American War. At Santiago, Cuba, the 9th and 10th Cavalry, the 24th and 25th Infantry added to their long record new medals of courage and gallantry. I'm Jim. After we cleaned up in Cuba, we went on with building factories, cities, Everything. As for me, well, I went to Panama to help on a little job. A little job connecting the Atlantic and Pacific. A little job. sons were serving with the 813th Pioneer Regiment near Marseille, the 332nd Labor Battalion, and the 808th Pioneer Regiment near Verdun. Fighting with the 8th Illinois on the Soissons Front, 372nd on the plains of Montreux, 371st at Busey Farm, and the 369th in the Argonne. The 369th fought on the line of fire for 191 days. Not a man ever captured. 
not a foot of ground ever lost. The first American troop to receive the Croix de Guerre, the 369th. And for action above and beyond the call of duty, many received honored medals. When they cleaned up in France, the boys came marching home. Among them was Henry Johnson, who with one companion, Needham Roberts, killed four and captured 28 Germans, for which the French nation decorated them for exceptional bravery. And there were those among the honored at Arlington, Samuel Washington, Walter Waters, William Fox, John Sims, Young, Charles Young, Colonel, United States Army. And to their memory, sermons in stone and bronze, tributes of a grateful nation to commemorate the heroism and sacrifice of all colored soldiers who served in the various wars engaged in by the United States of America that a lasting record shall be made of their unselfish devotion to duty. And in France at Bucy Palm, the French people erected a memorial to the 371st Infantry. This stone and the ground on which it stands are dedicated to the Negro troops who fought and died here on April 21st, 1918. 23 years later, on June the 15th, 1941, an invading German army. Yes, the Nazis destroyed our monuments in France, but our monuments here stand and will always stand. The founder of Tuskegee Institute, Booker T. Washington, 1856-1915. He lifted the veil of ignorance from his people and pointed the way to progress through education and industry. The late George Washington Carver, honored in the chemistry of agriculture and the men and women building the monuments of tomorrow. Law, elected judge of New York City courts, serving his second 10-year term. Explorer, the only other American with Admiral Peary when our flag was planted on the North Pole. Medicine, leading New York City surgeon. Father of the Blues, financier and publisher, contributing to the war bond drive. Education, principal of a New York City public school. Curator, Schomburg collection of literature, international prize winning sculptor. Singer. Hey.